Hey everyone, it's David. It's uh, weekend number two of the Touring M3 build. Uh, I'm back in the shop and you know, I'm making good headway. I had great help with uh, with the team this past weekend to get all of uh, all these parts out of the wagon. Uh, so that's great. I've got the front subframe out. I've got the rear subframe out. I've got all the under cladding, basically the entire engine base stripped. And then this past week, I've been just uh, coming here in the evenings and taking apart the interior. And that's what you saw with all the cables, um, all the all the wiring. I I've seen photos before, but I'm still surprised. Um, and I've just got a bag of bolts and nuts from the interior, so um, somewhat organized, like I said before. And what I'm trying to do today is make sure that I get the rest of the interior stripped. So we've got to get some carpet out, the speakers, um, the subs that go under the the seat. Um, the driver and passenger seat then get the rear undone, which I believe will be pretty straightforward um, We'll get the hatch which uh, I'll show in a second and then to be honest like my main area of concern is we've got these big Kind of connecting harnesses through the firewall and I'm just not exactly sure how to Separate these because when I do the one on this side and when I do the one on that side then I'll be able to get the full wiring loom through. So in the, in the front here, in the engine bay, we've got the fuse box. And then over here, we've got the connection that goes to the, uh, I'm get, probably the DME, um, the engine computer. And once we get those fed through, then if, effectively the entire front end is gonna be stripped clean and ready for for um, degreasing and then paint. That would be a big milestone. So that's what I'm shooting for. Um, I think that I'll just be recording some time lapse today and if I encounter any, any big uh, screw ups or successes, I'll definitely film that because um, I haven't seen any videos on how to get these wiring harnesses through the firewall. So I'll make sure to capture that when I figure it out so that everybody else who builds these awesome M3 wagons or makes a 340 wagon um, will know how this is done. All right, I'll talk to you guys later. Disassembling the interior was really interesting and you see me fiddling around here with the buttons that control all of the cameras and the suspension and the um, throttle response. This was the hardest part for sure. I had to pry at this thing for probably 45 minutes to get it to come out. And uh, I don't think I broke any tabs, but it's very possible that I did. We'll find out when I reinstall it. Um, so it's good that we're getting the express view of this because that was a pain. Um, also getting out the center console, pro tip, um, there are, you won't be able to see it in this view because I left the armrest up. Um, there are two Torx uh, screws underneath the key tray. So slotted all the way forward. And if I'd found that, uh, I probably would have saved myself a good half an hour. Getting out these airbags is actually pretty simple. There's one on both sides. You can see the driver's one is still hanging down. Um, you gotta get that out before you start taking apart the glove box area. And then you have to remove all this trim so that you can start disconnecting the upper part of the dash. Like we've heard my buddy Ryan say, getting the big stuff out feels great. So that definitely applied to the glove box and then when I was able to start detaching the front face of the entertainment system and heating and cooling system. You know, making, uh, making bigger gaps in the dash means I had better access to actually start getting everything fully disconnected and removed. So that was pretty awesome. And we're going to watch me struggle a little bit with the uh, speakers up at the, the center channel and then 
this is exactly what I was talking about, about the location of those two Torx screws up there. It took me, you know, a while longer to figure out where those darn things lived. There we go. Found them, got those out, and then watch. This whole center console is just going to come right out. Here I'm messing around with the, the two kind of ball lines that connect into the e-brake. I'd never disconnected this before, and so I was really struggling with, I mean, one, it's slick, but also like how you get them disconnected from the pulley. Um, you know, it probably took me 20 minutes to figure out, and once I did, then it was no problem. Progress update. Um, had some lunch, I'm a couple hours in, and the interior carpet is out. I'm pretty excited about this. Uh, pretty much all you see is blue paint and cables, miles and miles of cables. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it, feels, it feels good. We'll get the back stripped in, you know, no time-ish. And then uh, do a good job of marking and tracking all these wires, uh, taking lots of photos. It'll be, it'll be good. <clears throat> and then one uh, one small update uh, Getting the rear seats out is pretty easy. It's just a few Torx bolts But one thing that uh, that I didn't realize I've been trying really hard not to just like rip things apart And there's this kind of like ball flange on the seat from the you know 60 to the 40 and uh, You just gotta Just gotta kind of pull it out real quick um yeah, so it takes a little bit of force, not a ton of force. I'm terrified of breaking anything. Didn't break, came apart just great. Um, yeah, so back to it. figured out the stupid C pillar. So there's an Easter egg that behind that stupid little plastic airbag sign, well that comes off and there's a friendly little, I don't know, T25 Torx bolt. Not obvious, not necessary. But now we all know. It is very satisfying once you know how to do something, just going in and it takes 10% the amount of time to do it on the second side of the car. I was really surprised how many computers there are in the back of this thing. I mean, you've got audio computers, you've got the rear module, um, a bunch of stuff that I can't even tell you what they are, but. I did a better job of labeling things in the rear than I did in the front. So hopefully that pays dividends when it's time to put this thing back together. This is the amplifier here that I'm labeling. I made sure that the wagon that I got had the Harman Kardon system specifically so I didn't have to cut into the headliner because the rearmost speakers are up there instead of being in the shelf as you see in the sedan. gotta start this video outside today it's Sunday uh, and it's actually sunny and we've got blue skies here in Portland it's amazing and uh, I would definitely like to go for a run or a bike ride um, but I'm far more keen to actually get the rest of this wagon stripped so I've got a very dirty f80 here which thankfully is still one piece for all my runs to Lowe's and Ace Hardware and all that stuff 
Um, definitely the most fun way of uh, getting to the hardware store. And then uh, we'll walk inside here and uh, see where we're at with things. So, you know, it's just a bunch of wires. A um, little bit of carpet left. Uh, my Really, my mission for the day is to get these wires out of here. And so I've got to figure out how to push them through the firewall. So I think I'm going to try a little bit more force than yesterday. Um, definitely not going to cut anything, but, um, you know, they're meant to keep out water, these, these grommets. So... Um, I'll show those in a second, but um, they've definitely been a pain in the butt. Yeah. So another good job to, you know, whoever engineered these, whether it's BMW or a subcontractor, because these things are freaking hard to get out. And it's, it's these things right here. So very sturdy. Um, I'm going to try to ram them out. And then I'll, uh, I'll keep taking video, especially when I figure out how these things come out so other people can do it too. Got a small update, um, just because this was giving me some trouble. Uh, you've got this fuse box up front, and I figured out how to get it undone. I had undone this like T10, uh, which does not do anything. Don't waste your time with that. And I was fiddling around with these little, what look like clips over here. Don't waste your time with that. It's just two clips. Um, and they're really easy to get out when you figure out that's what you need to do. It's one on this side, one on that side. This thing comes out. And now uh, the journey of unplugging each of these little fuse, you know, wire intersect points begins. And then I can uh, fish all this through, which will be great. All right, major breakthrough here in getting these wires fished through the firewall. We've got this rubber poly uh, grommet, you know, weather protector here that I'm still gonna need to figure out how to collapse and squeeze through. But the thing that I wanna focus on is this kind of junction box. Um, and there's no way this is gonna fit through there, you know? Um, and so I've been wrestling around with these and I finally figured out that um, they have these little bits back here, if you can see this, that you have to use a pick tool and then it'll slide off of the plastic um, junction box here. So, all right, I think I got this figured out. All right, so again, we're on the, uh, the passenger side here and I think that you just kind of have to jam this thing through. So I can see that, you know, I'm trying to use something soft so I don't puncture it, but I think that that will actually go through the firewall if you just press hard enough. So the game plan is going to be, uh, I'll get this camera rolling over here um, and it's going to take a lot of pressure for sure, but hopefully I'll be able to capture when it actually pops on through. I'm fired up. Let's get these wires out of here. At this point, I wasn't really that nervous. I knew this had to have been the way it worked, but it just took so much force to get this thing through, and I was worried about breaking something or, I don't know, having to reorder a wiring harness, which probably would be in the thousands of dollars, but this was such a highlight of the day that this thing came through, and now I knew that I was right and that this is how the other side was gonna work. It was huge.
This was pretty thrilling and terrifying. The amount of cables and computers in that bin, if any of them broke, I won't find out until I'm building this thing back up, so fingers crossed. And look how stripped this thing is. It's pretty unbelievable. I've never done anything like this before. And yes, I still need to get the door panels off. I need to get the glass out. There's a lot more left to do, but man, this feels like amazing progress. <laughs>